Hi everyone, I'm Kieran from 81 Vintage and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you how I take simple inexpensive frames that I've thrifted and upcycle them into high-end expensive looking decor. I hope you like this video, if you do please do remember to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. So I bought this frame off Facebook Marketplace and it came with this picture of these old gentlemen in it. It's an original old picture but I just didn't really like the map and the frame it was in. So my tip for resellers is if you can find old frames you can jazz them up by putting religious art in them and religious art is always a big seller. I once took a £15 frame and transformed it into a £75 frame using this technique. I found this other frame in a charity shop with Winnie the Pooh, I've had it for years, I paid a pound for it and I was removing the staples from the back when I chipped a nail. I trimmed it off and then I used the nail pullers to remove the rest and removed the artwork. This is a really great technique if you can find pine frames especially. The tabs on the back but that's completely optional and up to you. Also have you seen my eye bracelet? I told you I have a thing for eyes. And I also have a thing for doing DIY in my pyjamas. Today we are wearing my Christmas Mickey Mouse. I gave the frames and the back a coat of matte black spray paint. Any type of matte black spray paint will work, just give them a good overall coating. I like to use matte black spray paint because it dries really quick. Then for the bigger frame I had to make a back. I had a piece of wood but it was way back at the back of the garage. I had to fight my way through and here you can see what we call my Nana cardigan. Do you have an item of clothing like this that's just super warm but you don't want to get rid of? Let me know down in the comments below. It actually gives me David Rose vibes from Shit's Creek but let me know in the comments what you think. I found a piece of scrap plywood that was off an old chest of drawers. It's always handy to save the backs for these types of projects. I trimmed it down on a circular saw and I love it when you can just do one cut, flip it over and finish the cut without having to get out of the table saw. Then it's back to the frames to give them a distress. I just use a 240 and a 120 grit sandpaper to really rough up those frames on the highest peaks. It's completely up to you how you distress them. I find that everyone has a particular different way of how much distressing they like. Then I blew it off and gave it a wipe with my Nana cardigan and then sprayed it with a clear lacquer. This is really the finishing touch that makes the frames look super expensive and vintage. This is just a clear lacquer from the auto spray section and in my opinion the more lacquer the better. Then it was, then it was time to let those dry and head inside. I had to trim out the picture of the old gentleman. For this, I just used a straight edge and a sharp craft knife. Then I checked it would fit in the frame and what the space would be around it. I didn't want to pay any money for a backing, so I went and found some old wallpaper that I had and cut a section out. I thought this would make it look vintage, but also it was really cost effective. I sprayed the back with spray adhesive and then glued on the wallpaper. I trimmed it roughly to size and then once it was fully stuck, trimmed it properly. There was a couple of areas that weren't fully stuck so I added a little bit more spray adhesive to finish that bit off. And then it was time to mount it. 
I used some double sided sticky tape just to secure it in place, I didn't want to do anything too permanent in case I wanted to remove it from the frame later on. Then it was time to put it back in the frame so I popped the glass back in and then I put the picture and the backing in place. And if you're going to be doing this regular, I recommend you get one of these tab drivers. They're actually incredibly useful and I used them last year to mount all of the pieces of glass in the greenhouse that we built. They're about £20 on Amazon. You line it up, you click the handle and that pops a tab in where you want it. And it holds your picture in place. I always pop a few in, check it looks okay and then I go to town and have lots more. Next onto the religious artwork. Religious artwork is really expensive and really hard to come across. So if you can make it and you're a reseller, you'll be sure to be able to sell some in your shop space. I sprayed the back with some spray adhesive and then I also sprayed the religious artwork that I'd had printed. You can find lots of pictures of religious artwork online and you can either print them yourself on a laser printer, have them printed at a coffee shop or usually I have someone from eBay print it for me. Now, I'm not particularly religious, but I do have a real appreciation for religious artwork. This piece especially just really speaks to me and it brings all sorts of emotions. I just think it's really atmospheric and it's just really special. Next, it's time to add on the finishing detail, which is this brushstroke Mod Podge. This is becoming quite rare to cut hold of, but you can usually find it online. When it comes, it's a bit thick, so I always like to water it down a little bit with some warm water. It goes on white and then it dries clear and it leaves the impression of brush strokes. So I just apply brush strokes in a random pattern all over the piece. Because the types of items that I sell often resemble antiques, I've had lots of dealings with wannabe antiques dealers. And I once had an antiques dealer pick up one of these pieces and ask if it was old. And I was like, well, if you class two weeks as old, then yes, it is. Once it's fully dried, it gives the appearance of it being an oil painting. You can just see in the bottom corner that it's not fully glued, but I actually don't mind that. It just makes it look all the more authentic. Then don't forget to clean your glass before you pop your artwork back in. There's nothing worse than turning it over and seeing fingerprints. Pop your artwork back in and drive in those tabs, check it and go to town on them. As I've said, if you've got a printer at home, you can really add value to these old frames. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please do remember to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing before you leave. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.